for eight years. Doesn't it strike you? This is the first time that the two of us, you and I, man and wife, ever talk seriously? Well, seriously? What does that mean? In eight whole years, no, longer, right from the moment we met, we haven't exchanged one serious word on one serious subject. Should I constantly be involving you in problems you couldn't possibly help me solve? I'm not talking about problems. I'm saying that we've never sat down together and seriously tried to get out of anything. Well, Nora, dearest, will you have wanted that? Yes, of course, that's just it. You've never understood me. A great wrong has been done me, Torval, first by Papa, then by you. What? By us? Who love you more than anyone in the world? You've never loved me. You thought it was a lot of fun to be in love with me. Nora, how can you say that? When I was at home with Papa, he told me all his opinions, so of course I had the same opinions. And if I had any others, I kept them hidden because he wouldn't have liked that. He called me his doll child, and he played with me like I played with my dolls. Then I came to your house. What kind of way is that to describe our marriage? I went from Papa's hands into yours. You set up everything according to your taste, so of course I had the same taste where I pretended to. You and Papa committed a great sin against me. It's your fault that I become what I am. This is unreasonable and it's ungrateful. Haven't you been happy here? No, never. I thought so, but I never really was. Not? Not happy? No, just having fun. You've always been very nice to me, but our home has never been anything but a playpen. I've been your doll wife here just as I was Papa's doll child at home, and my children, in turn, have been my dolls. It was fun when you came and played with me just as they had fun when I came and played with them. There's some truth in this, as exaggerated and hysterical as it is. But from now on, playtime is over. Now, the teaching begins. <laughs> <laughs> Who guessed this teaching? Me well, or the children? You and the children, my dearest Nora. Torvald, you're not the man to teach me how to be a good wife to you. You can say that. And me, how can I possibly teach the children? Nora. Didn't you say that yourself not too long ago? You didn't dare trust them to me? In the heat of the moment, how can you take that seriously? Yes, but you spoke the truth. I'm not equal to the task. There's another task I have to get through first. I have to try to teach myself. And you can't help me there. I've got to do it alone. And so I'm leaving you. What did you say? <laughs> if I'm going to find out anything about myself, about everything out there, I have to stand completely on my own. That's why I can't stay with you any longer. You are out of your mind. I won't allow it. I forbid you. It's no use forbidding me anything anymore. I won't take anything from you, now or later. What kind of man is this? Tomorrow I'm going home. Back to my old hometown, I mean. It'll be much easier for me to find something to do up there. You blind, inexperienced creature. <laughs> <laughs> I have to try to get some experience, Torval. Abandon your home, your husband, your children, do you have any idea what people would say? I can't worry about that. I only know what I have to do. It's grotesque. You're turning your back on your most secret duties. And what do you think those are? My most sacred duties. I tell you, aren't there two husband and children? I have other duties equally sacred. Why do you like what? Duties to myself. You're a wife and a mother. First and foremost. I don't believe that anymore. I believe that first and foremost I'm a human being just as much as you are. Or I should try to become one. I'm aware that most people agree with you, Torval, but I cannot be satisfied anymore with what most people say. <coughs> These things just aren't right for a young woman to be saying, or answer me. Maybe not. Let me try your conscience. I only know that my ideas are completely different from yours. I find out that the law is not what I thought it was, but I can't get into my head that the law is right. A woman has no right to spare her dying father's feelings or save her husband's life. You're talking like a child. You don't understand the world you're living in. No, I don't. But now I'm going to find out for myself. I've got to figure out who's right, the world or me. Yeah.